in the beginning, there was nothing but creativity. Infinite, pure potential. Hot and dense, expanding faster and faster for all eternity. Unlimited by the speed of light or by lack of space. In this everlasting acceleration, tiny events are expanding from time zero to infinity. What came first, the chicken or the egg? Did someone make it, or did it make itself? It seems today that there are only two legitimate options for the origin of the universe. Creation denotes the existence of a divine creator who has exercised his creative abilities, creating this world and the life forms we see. Life is the product of intelligent design. Evolution stresses the naturalistic descent of all living creatures from a common ancestor who originally evolved from inorganic matter Life is the product of random chance. There may be much cause for debate, but no matter what philosophy we adhere to, the one thing we all share in common is the planet Earth. A global philosophy emphasizes the oneness of the human race, the capacity of each individual to develop their own powers on a conscious level to arrive at inner harmony in order to establish a peaceful world. In the modern age, it has become more important than ever to exercise all the care and control we can in protecting our planet and its precious resources. It is what we do on an individual level that has the most impact in the world around us. As Mahatma Gandhi said, we must be the change we wish to see in the world. Volcanoes may destroy, but they create as well. Their eruptions make clear the awesome and destructive power of a volcano. Yet over a time span longer than human memory and record, volcanoes have played a key role in forming the planet on which we live. More than 80% of the Earth's surface, above and below sea level, is of volcanic origin. 
gaseous emissions from volcanic activity over hundreds of millions of years formed the Earth's earliest oceans and atmosphere, which supplied the ingredients vital to evolve and sustain life. Over geological eons, countless volcanic eruptions have produced mountains, plateaus, and plains. Subsequent erosion and weathering have in turn sculpted majestic landscapes and formed fertile soils. These volcanic soils and inviting terrains have attracted and continue to attract people to live on the flanks of volcanoes. As population density increases in regions of active or potentially active volcanoes, mankind must become increasingly aware of the hazards and learn not to crowd the volcanoes. People living in the shadow of volcanoes must live in harmony with them and expect, in fact plan for, periodic violent unleashings of their pent-up energy. Volcanoes can be literally quiet for hundreds of years and considered extinct. The surface and craters surrounding these so-called extinct volcanoes become green and covered with vegetation, therefore making an eruption totally unexpected. The world's volcanoes are not randomly distributed over the Earth's surface. They tend to be concentrated in narrow zones along plate boundaries called hotspots. A hotspot is an area of persistent volcanic activity originating at unusually hot areas of the mantle core boundary. Overlying mantle melts forming plumes of magma that rise and penetrate the crust, forming volcanoes. Instead of being driven to extinction by death from above, Dinosaurs might have ultimately been doomed by death from below in a series of monumental volcanic eruptions that occurred over 68 million years ago. The name Volcano comes from Vulcan, the Roman god of fire, 
a smith worker who perfected his craft with fire and magma from the bowels of the earth, the place he called home. Even today, volcanoes are associated with the power of divinity. Dreams of volcanoes can, in fact, symbolize the divine or an encounter with an awesome force. It can indicate a profound change that is taking place within the psyche, a radical shift in awareness, or an outpouring or eruption of the contents of the unconscious. Roman god Vulcan's forge was believed to be located underneath Mount Etna in Sicily. Many volcanoes are in and around the Mediterranean Sea. Italy's Vesuvius is the only active volcano on the European mainland. Near the island of Vulcano, the volcano Stromboli has been in a state of continuous eruption since early Roman times. Ocean plates are also involved, more particularly in the process of seafloor spreading. This involves the mid-ocean ridges, which are a system of narrow submarine cracks that can be traced down the center of the major oceans. The ocean floor is being continuously pulled apart along these mid-ocean ridges. Hot volcanic material rises from the Earth's mantle to fill the gap and continuously form new oceanic crust. Volcanoes are mountains, but they are very different from other mountains. than 500 active volcanoes on the planet that have erupted at least once within recorded history. Volcanoes are not formed by folding and crumpling, but by uplift and erosion. They are built by the accumulation of their own eruptive products, lava, crusted over ash flows, and airborne ash and dust. A volcanic plume is a mixture of particles and gas emitted by an eruption. Plumes are generated by fragmentation of magma and may reach heights of up to 80 kilometers. A 
According to scientists and geologists, the Earth's hotspots are under the influence of extraterrestrial, electromagnetic, and gravitational wave influence. The Earth's magnetic field is changing rapidly, and as it's also induced by the Sun's magnetic field, which is also in a weak period, perhaps we will see an apparent increase in volcanic activity, or the awakening of long dormant volcanic fields. Clouds protect, but they can harm as well. Clouds play a critical role in the Earth's climate, general atmospheric circulation, and global water balance. A cloud is made up of billions of microscopic liquid water droplets floating in the atmosphere above the surface of the Earth. A cloud forms when air is heated by the sun. As it rises, it slowly cools as it reaches the saturation point and water condenses, forming a cloud. As long as the cloud is warmer than the outside air around it, it floats. Light is made up of colors of the rainbow, and when you add up all the colors together, you get white. Clouds look white because they reflect all the colors the exact same amount. Why do clouds turn gray? If the clouds get thick enough or high enough, all the light above does not make it through, so they appear gray or dark. Also, if there are lots of other clouds around, their shadow can add to the gray appearance. Global warming is forecast to have a catastrophic effect on the weather all over the planet. This will place extreme pressure on the world's natural resources. To try and combat these effects, experts are increasingly turning to weather modification techniques such as cloud seeding. Cloud seeding is the attempt to change the amount or type of precipitation that falls from clouds by dispersing substances into the air, altering the microphysical processes within the cloud. 
In the future, weather modification could even be used to confront the growing threat of superstorms. While there are clear humanitarian reasons for wanting to manipulate the weather, there is also a dark history around previous governmental attempts to do so. Don't mess with Mother Nature. Bacteria that live in clouds may also have the ability to promote rainstorms as a way to disperse themselves. These bacteria may be a constant feedback between terrestrial ecosystems and clouds. Understanding the role of clouds in regulating both weather and climate is at an early stage and remains a critical unknown factor in predicting the extent of global warming. The eye of a storm is a region of mostly calm weather found at the center of strong tropical cyclones. The eye is a roughly circular area, typically 30 to 65 kilometers in diameter, surrounded by the eye wall and a ring of towering thunderstorms where the most severe weather of a cyclone occurs. These eye-like features are most normally found in intensifying tropical storms and hurricanes. Storms with a clear eye have a mostly rain-free center with light winds and clear skies in stark contrast to the surrounding turbulent storm. The peace in the eye of the storm Understanding how pollutants are absorbed within the clouds is an extremely important undertaking. Clouds reflect solar radiation and prevent it from reaching the surface of Earth, similar to an umbrella, preventing the warming of the atmosphere through absorption of the radiation. Clouds also intercept heat radiation from the Earth's surface and atmosphere, trapping and radiating it back down, warming the surface. Global warming is inevitable when greenhouse gases are added to the atmosphere. The addition of heat-trapping greenhouse gases to the atmosphere by humans is certain to induce changes in Earth's climate. When pollutants enter the atmosphere, these particles are absorbed by the cloud droplets the cloud droplets, in turn, reach the soil through precipitation, contaminating the water and the earth.
Human activity has a visible and significant impact on cloud cover and climate, and therefore on the world. Can there be human progress without planetary pollution? Throughout the ages, ice has been a source of preservation. Its glacial presence maintains nearly 70% of the world's freshwater reserve and balances global sea levels. It not only keeps record of our evolution and past record climates, it bears witness to the increasing and undeniable signs of environmental misconduct. Sea ice has an important effect on the heat balance of the polar oceans, since it insulates the relatively warm ocean from the much colder air above, thus reducing heat loss from the oceans. Sea ice is also an important source of dense saline bottom water. While freezing, the water rejects its salt content, leaving pure ice. During glaciation, Water was taken from the oceans to form the ice at high latitudes. The global sea level dropped by about 120 meters, exposing the continental shelves and forming land bridges between land masses for animals to migrate. The weight of the ice sheets was so great that they deformed the Earth's crust and mantle. During deglaciation, the melted ice water returned to the oceans, causing sea levels to rise. This process caused sudden shifts in coastlines and hydration systems, resulting in emerging lands and collapsed ice dams. The ice-covered land rebounded. Although the last glacial period ended more than 8,000 years ago, its effects can still be seen today. Erratic boulders, fjords, and kettle lakes are some of the typical features left behind by the glaciers.
There is evidence that greenhouse gas levels fell at the start of ice ages and rose during the retreat of the ice sheets. But it is difficult to establish cause and effect. Greenhouse gas levels may also have been affected by other factors, which have been proposed as causes of ice ages, such as the movement of continents and volcanism. The oxygen-rich Antarctic bottom water spreads out over the world's ocean floors, causing deep ocean temperatures to be cooled to less than 2 degrees Celsius, helping to drive ocean circulation. Antarctic waters provide essential nutrients to the rest of the world's oceans, supporting life systems thousands of kilometers away. About 20,000 years ago, the Earth was still in the grip of the last ice age. has memory. Ice sheets are formed by layers of compressed snow from more than a hundred thousand years. It is possible to date each layer of ice and determine the climatological information embedded in it. Ice core testing studies the various gases and dust particles and radioactive byproducts that have been trapped in the ice. Ice core testing is by far more accurate than any other natural recorder of climate, such as tree rings or sediment layers. Ice memory reflects the climate change that is the greatest environmental threat to polar caps and their fragile ecosystems. Global warming visibly affects polar regions of the planet by reducing the amount of water held in ice.
Some of the extremes on the polar caps include a very thin atmosphere that provides a minimal reduction in a greenhouse effect. An enormous supply of fresh water that represents 80% of the world's reserves. Extreme levels of temperatures from minus 30 degrees on the North Pole to minus 60 degrees in the South. A permanent community of around 100 scientific researchers from around the world. Treacherous terrain for expeditions as well as difficult living arrangements. The Earth's polar ice caps have changed dramatically over the last 12,000 years. Seasonal variations of the ice caps takes place due to varied solar energy absorption as the planet or moon revolves around the sun. In geologic timescales, the ice caps may grow or shrink due to climate variation. The deposit of atmospheric particles affects water, sediments, and soil from which plants and animals take in these pollutants. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. When it comes to human nature and nature, humans may hurt the earth, but they can also help it. In just a few thousand years, we have swallowed up more than a third of the planet's land for our cities, farmland, and pastures leaving over 1,500 species threatened with extinction. Plowed up prairies, raised forests, drained ground wells, introduced nuclear waste, chemical pollution, and now the looming specter of climate change. We are losing Earth's greatest biological treasures just as we are beginning to appreciate their true value. Rainforests once covered 14% of the Earth's land surface. Now, 
they cover a mere 6%, and experts estimate that the last remaining rainforests could be consumed in less than 40 years. Tropical rainforests have been called the jewels of the earth and the world's largest pharmacy. Because of the large number of natural medicines discovered there, rainforests are also responsible for 28% of the world's oxygen turnover produced by photosynthesis. One and a half acres of rainforest are lost every second. People have changed ecosystems to meet growing demands for food, fresh water, and energy. These changes have helped improve the lives of thousands of millions of people. And yet they have also weakened the ability of nature to provide important benefits for people. Over 4.5 billion years of geologic history, time has transformed the Earth profoundly. Continents have drifted across the globe. Rivers have carved valleys and canyons where layers of rock preserve a record of millions of years of Earth and its history. Ninety-nine point ninety-four percent of the Earth consists of crust, rocky mantle, and molten interior. What we call solid Earth is really large slabs of crust that float atop molten rock. Where slabs meet, earthquakes shake, mountain ranges rise, and volcanoes explode. Where there is smoke, there is fire. Lava is liquid molten rock expelled by a volcano during eruption. With temperatures at around 1000 degrees Celsius. Although lava is quite viscous, it can flow great distances. through vein-like channels before cooling and solidifying. Deserts are increasingly seen as sources for solar energy, an attractive alternative to traditional power plants, which burn polluting fossil fuels such as oil and coal. Just a tiny fraction of the sun's energy that shines upon the Earth's largest deserts could meet all the electricity demands of an entire continent. 
Is man a natural enemy to nature? Left to its own devices, nature would begin to reclaim the planet. The air and water would cleanse themselves. Roads and cities would crumble back to dust. We can be the change we wish to see in the world. The things we share on our planet are far more valuable than the things which divide us. One small step for man. One giant leap for mankind. <laughs>